Welcome to today's brief tutorial on how to use QView with WindRiver 2 on previously collected data. My name is Jim Rogers. I'm the director of the Water Resources product line, and I'll be your presenter today. The first thing you want to do once you get QView all loaded is open up WindRiver 2. You'll see that QView is loaded in the background on the lower right-hand corner. This is really no different than playing back data files as you normally would with WindRiver 2. The first thing you need to do is load a measurement file. QView is alerting you of this as well in the lower right screen. So we'll click on a measurement, and we'll say File, and we'll say Open Measurement, and we'll grab this one right here. So the first thing that you do is you see that the measurement is loaded, so let's quickly play back the selected transects. We take a look at what the data looks like here. So we're going to say Reprocess Selected Transect and now the data appears. This is where the power of QView comes into play. Look on the lower right screen. This is how QView presents itself when you're collecting data. But now that we've got the data collected, we're back in the office, let's maximize QView and take a look at what the detailed report is. We can see right here we've got a little problem. Procedure is shown up in red, measurements in green. And you're just looking at this, okay, it's not a whole lot of information, so how do I figure out what's happened here? So let's go ahead and maximize QView. I'm going to take this all the way to full screen here for presentation purposes. So here's your QView quality assessment report. The first thing I would like you to notice is that this is broken out into multiple sections. The first section is just an overall at the very top. You see procedures listed as bad. We'll get back to that in a second. And measurement is listed as good. So we've got three basic sections here, procedure, measurement, and transects, which you see is located all the way down on the screen. So we'll take a look at these in a little bit more detail momentarily. So the first thing you ask yourself is, why is this bad? Well, if we take a look at the procedure, this is where most of our issues have occurred. The first thing to understand is QView is set up and driven by a rules base. Now the rules base can be found in configure and options. So if you take a look at rules at the very top, you click on browse, and you'll notice right now I'm running the default RDI. So I'm running default RDI. We have some previously selected rule sets based on uh, parameters and operational considerations from various regions. So we have Australia, we have New Zealand, we have North America. We have one that I created in a previous webinar called test, and then we have the TRDI default. So we're going to use the TRDI default at this time. So that's where you would select the different rule sets or change rule sets in, in a post-processing situation. So the first thing we've noticed, this says ADCP test completed and passed. This says fail. So there's two priorities with this one. Did somebody run the ADCP test? And most importantly, did it pass? Well, right now we don't know either, but we do know it wasn't done. Either they didn't do the ADCP test or they did the test and it didn't pass. Moving bed tests done and valid. Uh, that was a fail. They did a minimum of two transects, but they also have a fail here on transects and reciprocal pairs. We'll address that one momentarily. And then ADCP transducer depth is entered. Okay, that says a pass. So overall, it's given us a procedure with 15 accumulated points in the way the rules are set up for this particular data file. The higher the points, the worse this is. Notice it says bad. Bad is going to trigger anywhere between 11 and 25 points. We can't really do anything about the ADCP test completed and passed because it's too late. We're already back in the office. But let's take a look at transects and reciprocal pairs. So if I minimize this window back down and I take a look and Notice that I've got five sets of transects. Let's see how this is affected. Let me just take transect zero off. Notice the procedure at this point goes to poor. So we've changed it from bad to poor because our transects in reciprocal pairs has now gone from a fail condition to a pass condition. So you can see now, does this rule required? Well, that's entirely up to you, your data chiefs, or how you're set up for your rules for your particular area. But you can see how changing something in the post-processing can have an effect on the overall scoring of your discharge measurement. So that was simply something that we just didn't have 
reciprocal pairs. Turn that rule off or just get rid of one of the transects and you can bring this to a pass condition. Let's go ahead and take a look down at the procedure information. So right below the pore, we notice that magnetic variation wasn't entered. Well, since we're using a flux gate compass, that's probably one we want to be a little bit concerned with. We entered a station name, the river name. We did not enter a gauge height change. Um, didn't do the field party. We didn't enter a rated discharge gauge height. We didn't enter the agency, and we didn't enter water temperature. Out of all of these, you know, this isn't the greatest probably procedural representation of what you're supposed to do collecting data, but the magnetic variation and not entering the water temperature are probably the two largest concerns that we have here in the procedure. Moving down from the procedure, let's look at the measurements. The measurements are looking good. Uh, the RMR, the percent of the RMR of the discharge was fine. The CV of area and width and the total duration, meaning did we take enough time to collect the transects? Again, in the rules wizard, which is something that we will cover in a later webinar, um, you have control over the weight of these, whether the rule is even going to apply to your data set. But right now we have this set at, you need to do equal to or greater than 720 seconds to get a pass condition or to turn this into a green. So the measurement itself is good. It's got five points. Um, and again, in this case, the lower the number of accumulated points, the better. So we're looking at a good measurement. Although the procedure wasn't followed very well, uh, the repeatability of the discharge measurements look fairly good. So if the overall measurement looks fine, let's take a look at the individual transects. So now we're looking at the individual transects. You can see transect 1, 2, 3, and 4. For the most part, we've done fairly good here. We don't have any bads, but we do have a few pores. So we'll take a look at um, transect 1. Percent of discharge within the mean. Well, all four transects were fine. Percent of measured discharge. That one we seem to have a little bit of a problem on, on all four of these transects. It's not necessarily bad and unusable. Um, but the way the rules is set up, it's alerting you that you might want to take a look at all four of these transects is, is in, in regard to the percentage of measured discharge. The other one that appears that uh, catch our attention is transect duration greater than 120 seconds. Well, you got to take into consideration your sites here. Um, there are some areas where the channel is very, very narrow and maybe 120 seconds is too long uh, for that particular site. Uh, you have control of this in the rules wizard. You can say, I can lower that number, I can increase that number, and I can change the numbers that actually turn into good, fair, poor, and bad. So in this case, it's saying we're in between 120 to 180 seconds in there, and we really want to have something that's you know greater than 180. Notice that transect 2 and transect 3 are the ones that triggered this poor result. If we'd gone just a little bit longer on those two transects, this would have most assuredly have turned to a green. And the final one here that's catching our attention is the percent of bad depth cells. I think we kind of saw that in this data set here when we looked at this. You can see when we're looking in the contour plot, um, we do have some missing depth cells here. So it's not necessarily marking all of this data is bad. It's simply indicating that when we're looking at this particular discharge measurements, we have uh, kind of poor based on where we set our rules. We wanted a good to be um, less than 5%. And you can see we have transect 1 was 8%, 11.8 uh, for transects 2, and so forth across the, the other remaining two transects. So if you look at transect 1, transect 1 had a, had a good measurement. Uh, 2 and 3 were rated as fair. 4 was good. So all in all, the measurements and the transects themselves are in pretty good shape. We probably could have spent just a little bit longer on transect 2 and 3 um, to bring the uh, rating of this particular uh, measurement a, a little bit better. Um, I think a little bit more good data. All in all, there's not much you can do to control that, uh, especially if you're using River Rays and River Pro ADCPs. These devices are doing auto setups. We would expect to have less missing data because of that. So this is a quick snapshot right here 
of what the data looks like in a post-processing evaluation. And again, I want to remind you that while you're collecting data in the field, and we will have another webinar for that in the future as well, um, you're going to see QView in the lower right-hand corner, so you're going to be getting instantaneous feedback. So even before you start the data collection, the procedure is going to be flagged as red until you start doing something as such as calibrating the compasses and running the ADCP tests and doing moving boat assessments and loop tests. Uh, so it's going to be monitoring you for that. A good rule of thumb is don't start collecting or performing your transects if your procedures haven't been completed. Again, it's up to you to set which rules apply in procedures and measurements and transects, so you do have control over that. So you can tailor it to your unique sites and, and conditions. The last item I'd like to cover on here for you, and it's explained very thoroughly in the uh, online help menu, which you see right there, is we're going to take a look at the discharge sensitivity. So here's something you need to do if you're going to play back data that was not collected with QView, you're going to have to reprocess your selected transects so that your sensitivity analysis is able to provide you an answer. This graph displays the discharge sensitivity analysis information to determine how sensitive the final discharge is to the selected top and bottom extrapolation methods. This analysis provides functionality that is similar but not identical to the USGS extract software. Measurements using ADCPs do not profile all the way from the top to the bottom of the riverbed. Instead, there are two unmeasured regions. One is at the top due to the blanking and the ringing of the ADCP, and one is at the bottom due to side rows. These two unmeasured areas each contribute to the total discharge and therefore must be considered in the total discharge computation. The unmeasured areas are estimates using a process known as velocity profile extrapolation, where the measured velocity data is extrapolated up to the surface and down to the bottom. So let's take a look at the graph here. This graph is using velocity profile extrapolation and is displayed graphically using a normalized depth and normalized discharge. Normalized depth is the individual depth cell divided by the river depth for that ensemble. Normalized discharge is the individual discharge divided by the average discharge for the ensemble. This provides a common basis for comparing data in different portions of a transect or measurement, since the velocity and discharge may vary greatly from one bank to the other. So on the graph, you can see we have a bunch of gray dots. So what are these? This is the raw data in the normalized discharge. This data is not displayed by default. If you want to display this on your screen, uh, click the Configuration and Options menu and select the Show Individual Depth Cell Data Box. So let me show you real quick on how to do that. So you go to Configure, you go to Options, and you can see I have checked right here, Show Individual Depth Cell Data. You will have to do that if you want to see this on the gray dots. The mean normalized depth, these are these blue bars we see on the far right side of the screen. This is the normalized distance from the stream bed divided into 20 depth segments. A medium value of the normalized unit discharge is then computed for each segment, and the result is assigned to the average normalized depth for the data in that segment. The, local, the location of the mean normalized depth for each segment and the number of points used in each segment is reported on the right side of the graph. A median value is used to uh, minimize any effects of outliers that we may have. So on the screen itself here we see black and the white squares. A solid black square represents the median values for each normalized depth segment of the composite of all transects in the measurement. White squares represent the median values for each normalized depth segment of each transect. These squares may blend together and you may not see one, so don't be surprised if you just see a black square or a white square. If they overlie on each other, they may just kind of blend into one. The black line that we see represents the recommended top and bottom extrapolation methods. The blue line that we see right here represents extrapolations using the 1-6 power law. So you can see we've got a bit of a difference here. So what is the graph telling us? Well, let's take a look over at the discharge sensitivity analysis. What this is saying that we have used right here for our top extrapolation method, power. 
And you, our bottom extrapolation method is also power. This is the default values for transect. What it's recommending is a top extrapolation method of constant and a bottom of no slip. So how would we apply this and reprocess our data? Let's go back to our transect screen real quick and I'll walk you through that. So we'll minimize this window. So now we're looking back at our Wind River screen. Let's take a look first at our total Q. Our discharge right now is 39.77. What should we expect if we use the extrapolation methods that our sensitivity analysis says? Well, if we come down here and look at constant and no slip, and we come over here to the method, the constant no slip, if we use the same exponent of 1667, we should see a difference of about 1.16% from what our total Q is now. So let's go back and take a look at our total Q. So right now our total Q is 39.77. We should expect to see that to decrease by 1.16%. So how do I apply this on previously collected data? So the first thing we do is let's go up to our transect up here. Let's expand that. As soon as we expand that, we'll go to Playback Configuration. Double click on that. Right now, you here's your properties. We've selected Discharge. So this is where we change the top method. Now remember, the top method was recommended to be constant. So we'll click the drop-down menu and we'll click Constant. And the bottom discharge method was No Slip. So we'll come down here and No Slip. For the tutorial, I'm going to leave the power curve coefficients alone. We're going to right click over here and we're going to apply to check active transects. So now that we've done that, we're going to have to play the data back. So we come up to play that and we come all the way to reprocess check transects. We'll click on that and it's going to reprocess these transects with the new top and bottom estimates that we've selected. And note that the discharge used to be 39.777 and it is now decreased to 39.265. And this is in line with what we expected based on the recommendations from the data sensitivity analysis. All of this is thoroughly explained inside the QView help menu. I hope this brief tutorial has given you a better appreciation of what the power of QView can bring to not only in the field, but also to the post-processing data analysis in the office. Thank you very much for your time.